filmsimplified.com. I'm bringing the shadows down with no effect on the highlights at all. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com, and today we're going to be discussing a problem that frustrates a lot of beginners when they start using the color wheels. So let's take a look at this image here. In the first node, I'm going to be balancing the image, so I'm just going to push lift down a bit, maybe also gamma down a bit, increase saturation, and maybe just reduce gain a bit, and we just balance the image in the first node. Actually, let's just change the colors a bit and much better. So here is the image before, and after. Now I'm going to add another node in order to stylize the image. And now let's take a look at the problem. Note that I have the scopes open here and that currently I'm on primaries wheels. I'm going to start by controlling the gain color wheel. Note that the gain color wheel should not, or at least theoretically, should be affecting highlights and not shadows. However, take a look at this. While controlling the gain color wheel, take a look at the scopes. Notice that when I change the gain color wheel, yes, the effect is mostly happening in the highlights, but it's also affecting the shadows. Take a look at this area here. This is clearly in shadows, and the changes I'm making are affecting shadows and highlights. So even though we're changing the highlights, but we're also affecting the shadows. That's because of the way the uh, gain color wheel works. Yes, it's supposed to control the highlights more, but gain simply stretches the image starting from shadows. So think of it like something like just, uh, you know, stretching the image. Uh, and when this stretching happens, yes, it will affect the highlights more, but it will also affect shadows and the other way around. Notice that when I control the lift color wheel, yes, the effect is happening mostly in shadows, but the changes are also affecting the highlights. Notice the effect on the highlights, even though I'm controlling the lift wheel, which should theoretically only control shadows. Again, that's because of the wide range that is used by the primaries wheels. That's not a bad thing. In most cases, that's what you want to happen. However, sometimes you might need very precise controls, like you're trying to control the highlights in a very contrasty image and you don't want the shadows to be affected at all. That's why we're using this image. Notice the big difference between highlights and shadows. Actually, if you look at the scopes, you'll see that it's a pretty contrasty image with a lot of information being concentrated in shadows. Take a look at this part here. This simply means that there's a lot of information in shadows and we cannot afford to push shadows down if we wanted to bring the highlights down a bit. So for example, I'll go back to the game controller and bring it down and keep your eye here. Notice that even though we're bringing the highlights down, we're also compressing the shadows a lot. Now Resolve offers many solutions to this problem. However, let's take a look at a particular solution that uh, is very easy to implement. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Let's reset everything and now I'm going to switch from the primaries wheels to the log wheels. So I'll click here and these are the log wheels. Notice the naming when I was on the uh, primaries wheels, notice the name here primaries, the names of the uh, color wheels are lift, gamma, and gain because they work in a particular way. However, if I switch to the log wheels, notice that the names of the wheels change. So shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now, in order to make this easy, we will be eliminating the wheel in the middle, so the uh, midtones wheel, and we're only going to keep the shadows and highlights wheels active. Doing that is pretty simple. All I need to do is to use this controller. So these are the two range controllers. So this range controller basically determines the range that is controlled by the shadows wheel and this range controller the one to the right determines the range of the image that is being controlled by the highlights wheel so it's pretty simple I'm just going to go to the range controller of the shadows wheel and I'm just going to pull it all the way to one and now what happened is that I split the image exactly in half so the highlights wheel will only control the top portion and the shadows wheel will only control the bottom portion. Let's take a look at an example. 
I'll start by bringing highlights down and notice that I'm bringing highlights down without affecting shadows at all. Actually, take a look at this part here. Keep your eye here. No matter what I do, I'm only controlling only the highlights. And if I change the colors in any way, notice that all the changes are happening in the top half without affecting the bottom half. Let's reset highlights. And now I'm going to switch to the shadows wheel. And in the shadows wheel, I'm going to also bring the shadows up, down, maybe change the uh, colors and notice that all the changes are only happening in the bottom portion without affecting the top portion. Let's reset the wheel. I'll click here in order to reset this particular wheel. Notice that this effect happened because we changed the range to one. However, if I use this reset button, so not the reset buttons on top of the wheels themselves, but the reset button on top of the effect, this range controller have just been reset to its original value. So just make sure to reset the wheels, but not this effect. And if you use this button, simply drag this all the way to the right. So it's one again. Notice that when we do this, the mid-tone wheel doesn't work anymore. It doesn't affect the image, but that's totally fine. So let's reset it. So this will allow us to affect the highlights or shadows without contaminating one or the other. Let's take a look at an example. So in this image, let's say that I wanted to make the area outside more yellow, for example, or orange, I can simply use the highlight, pull it to the left, and I can make this as orange as I want to. I can actually reduce its exposure. So it's pretty, uh, the exposure is pretty high here. So using this controller, I'm just going to bring it down, actually bring it down more. Notice how I'm just controlling the highlights outside the window without controlling him at all, of like the skin tones or the person. And I'm just going to bring the highlights even to more yellow, bring it down more yellow and reduce it more. Great. This might not be the best looking image ever, but it clearly demonstrates how this technique allows us to control the highlights without the shadows. And of course here, let's say that we want to bring the shadows a bit down for more contrast. Using this shadows controller, notice that we're bringing the shadows down without affecting the highlights at all. So the highlight troll off, which is not great at the moment, but I mean, we have certain highlight troll off. So using this shadows controller now, I'm bringing the shadows down with no effect on the highlights at all. Let's actually bring the highlights down a bit and much better. The downside here that a lot of beginners will face is that using the shadows controller, you can really oversaturate shadows, which is not or something that is recommended. So for example, let's bring shadows towards blue, for example, and notice how saturated the shadows are. Take a look at the shadows here. They're pretty saturated. Fixing that is pretty simple. I'll simply add a new node. And then the last node in the curves panel, I'm going to switch to uh, uh, the Luma versus saturation curve. And here we have two points. You simply need to bring the point to the left down a bit in order to control the saturation of shadows without controlling the saturation of highlights. Highlights. So notice that I'm bringing the saturation down in shadows, but not in highlights. However, there's a small problem here using these three dots. I'm going to click here, go to histogram, and I'm going to switch histogram to input. So this is the input histogram and notice where the highlights lie. So when we bring the shadows down, notice that we also brought the saturation and highlights a bit down. Notice this part here, these are the highlights. And notice that we brought, keep your eye here on this part. Notice that we brought the saturation of highlights down. So I'm just going to click here, bring the saturation back up. So now we just brought the saturation of shadows down without affecting the saturation of highlights. The point of this technique is that it's pretty easy to use for beginners because usually one of the things that frustrates beginners a lot is that Everybody tends to use primaries wheels usually. They try to stay away from all the other wheels in Resolve and just use the primaries wheels, which is which is fine for beginners. But the problem with primaries wheels is that for beginners, whenever, for example, they try to fix something in the highlights, it, it somehow affects the shadows a bit. And they try to fix the shadows, it affects the highlights, and their changes affect the highlights again. And it's a weird balancing act. Of course, when you become more experienced, this wouldn't be a problem anymore. But I mean, for beginners, this provides a very easy way to control highlights without affecting shadows or the other way around. I'll delete the last node. And I'll preset the log wheels one more time. Notice that again, we're on log wheels. And let's say that you did not want to use this uh, 
a low range controller, just you left everything as is, everything still works the same, however, with a new range in the middle. So for example, notice that if I control highlights, notice the range that is being controlled here in the scopes, it's only the upper portion. And if you go to shadows, so you control the shadows, we'll notice that you're controlling this part without affecting the midtones at all. And of course, the midtones controller will only affect the midtones without affecting the highlights or shadows. Again, there's nothing wrong with this approach, but it, it's a bit harder to use for beginners because what usually happens is that you increase the uh, midtones a bit. And if you don't do it carefully, you end up with this thin line here that is usually translated into weird artifacts into the image. So the image doesn't look very natural. So the first technique is much easier to use for beginners. I hope this was helpful. If this was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you.